Hello, my name is Sarah Evans and I'm a PhD student at Colorado School of Mines working with Dr. Judith klein sitharman in the Quantitative Biosciences and Engineering program. Today, I will be presenting on predicting the structure of albicinuclein using homology analysis with, with 14.3.3 protein. Our project is motivated by Parkinson's disease, which is a complex neurological disease that leads to the death or reduction of dopaminergic neurons. Coincidentally, Parkinson Awareness Month is in April during the grads' presentations. PD affects nearly 1 million people in the United States, resulting in an economic burden of 52 billion US dollars. And it is estimated 6 million people live with PD worldwide. In this presentation, I will answer why do we need to predict the structure of alpha-synuclein in order to understand Parkinson's. So what exactly is Parkinson's disease? In the normal brain, the neurotransmitter dopamine, here represented as small red dots, is transported within lipid vesicles and released across neuronal synapses to transmit chemical signals. This process controls voluntary movement, our reward system, memory, and motivation. This takes place in a part of the brain called the substantia nigra. In Parkinson's disease, the neurons that transmit dopamine begin to die, causing resting tremor, stiffness, and disrupted sleep. Often, depression and hallucinations can be exacerbated by current pharmaceutical treatments. Still, why do we need to focus on alpha-synuclein? Well, in the 1910s, Lewy bodies were identified as the most prominent cellular feature in Parkinson's disease patients. In the 1990s, these clumps of insoluble protein were found to be composed primarily of alpha-synuclein. In parallel, genetic mutations in the gene SNCA were connected to Parkinson's disease, and this gene codes for alpha-synuclein. In recent years, reactive oxygen species have been suggested to affect the folding of alpha-synuclein and the neurotransmission of dopamine. However, is alpha-synuclein helpful or harmful? The answer is both. What we know is that mutated alpha-synuclein is associated with neuronal death. We also know that alpha-synuclein can help with vesicle trafficking and can even act as a chaperone to help other proteins function. So let's talk about alpha-synuclein in the context of protein structure. First is the primary structure or the amino acid sequence shown in the top left. This sequence is coded by our DNA, which means genetic mutations associated with the diseases ultimately can be traced to the mutations in the protein. The sequence can form interchain bonds to create secondary structure alpha helices and beta pleated sheets and ultimately fold into a three-dimensional shape that defines the protein's function. And this shape, of course, is affected by genetic mutations because of the altered bonding structure. This 3D shape can be found to combine with other monomers into a quaternary structure as shown in the bottom right. But what about a disordered protein? And in fact, alpha-synuclein is mostly found as a disordered protein. However, it also exists in metastable equilibrium with the lipid-bound monomer, which is partly folded and partly disordered, and the helical tetramer, which is four partly folded monomers. As you can see, the end remains disordered. The pathogenic pathway, however, is caused by the misfolding of alpha-synuclein into beta-pleated sheets, here shown as arrows, instead of the helical structures on the left. This form continues to assemble into large fibrils, which then tangle into Lewy body structures. So, how can we find what stabilizes the helpful normal structures of alpha-synuclein and prevent the toxic shape? For this, our lab uses homology studies to predict the important stabilizing aspects of alpha-synuclein. We start with identifying a structural template, then we compare the target and template structures, determine their structural similarities, and the biological significance of this analysis. For our template structure, we want to find a protein that is structurally and functionally well understood, as well as being relevant to alpha-synuclein. What we found is that there is some preliminary evidence that 1433 protein has a small amount of sequence similarity to alpha-synuclein. 1433 protein is a rigid helical protein, and it is biologically important and evolutionarily preserved, here shown on the right-hand side of the screen. What we can see is that both alpha-synuclein on the left and 1433 have been observed uh, to have structural similarities such as the alpha-helical secondary structure and the ability to form dimers composed of two units and tetramers composed of four units. In the literature, we also find there is some functional similarity as well. 
both proteins can act as chaperones and facilitate neurotransmitter pathways. So we're gonna take our study beyond just the sequence, but we'll still start our analysis by confirming sequence homology using BLAST, the basic local alignment search tool that uses a database search algorithm to find segments of amino acids that are significantly similar between the proteins. We use Clustal Omega, a multiple sequence alignment tool to compare the seven sister forms of 1433 protein found in the body. So shown at the top here is the 140 length amino acid sequence that makes up alpha-synuclein. Alpha-synuclein has three important regions, the N-terminus, the central NAC region, and the flexible C-terminus. The non-amyloid beta component or NAC region actually corresponds to that core region of the toxic form of alpha-synuclein. What we found is that the 1433 protein aligns to this NAC region of alpha-synuclein and to a small segment in the C-terminus. These regions are emphasized in purple. Importantly, those stable helical structures of 1433 could indicate a potential molecular mechanism for stabilizing alpha-synuclein. We then move on to the secondary structure from this and analyze whether the pathogenic properties of alpha-synuclein are relevant to the 1433 protein. We use PONDER, PASTA 2.0, and MLPRED2 to predict the natural disordered regions and regions that are prone to aggregation. On the x-axis here, we show the number of amino acids in alpha-synuclein from 1 to 140 and the probability metric on the y-axis. We find that 1433, shown in blue on the left, is predicted to have some regions of disorder, and these regions overlap with the results for alpha-synuclein shown in red, and they have a similar profile. Now on the right, we also see there is a probability for aggregation in the 1433 protein that also shows similarity to alpha-synuclein within the critical NAC region, and here the overlap is shown as a green bar. Importantly, 1433 has not been observed to create amyloids like alpha-synuclein, but instead self-assembles into stable dimers and tetramers. Our goal is to use this information to figure out how to stabilize the NAC region of alpha-synuclein. So now we progress to the 3D structure. We use PyMol, an open source molecular visualization software, where we input the X-ray crystallography data for 1433 and the NMR data for alpha-synuclein. The sequence homology region is now shown in gold and aligns to the central core region of both proteins. This means our alignment in the NAC region of alpha-synuclein corresponds to important stabilizing helices at the core of the alpha-synuclein tetramer. The corresponding region in the 1433 tetramer includes important bonds that allow the dimer and tetramer to form. Importantly, this region is involved with the self-assembly of both proteins, indicating the helical tetramer is evolutionarily conserved and could be targeted for drug therapies. So now we look at the functional hom homology, thinking about how this structure could connect with the protein's functions and interactions. We use string or search tool for the retrieval of interacting genes and proteins to carry out this analysis. First, we submit a list of interactors for each protein to the database. String creates two separate networks and the interactions are ranked for each network. We then compare the two lists for commonalities. And indeed, our analysis of same pair protein-protein interactions show three commonalities. And these proteins are all critical to neuronal health. Tyrosine hydroxylase, or TH, catalyzes the synthesis of dopamine. Tau protein, or MAPT, is known to form neuronal tangles in Alzheimer's disease, another neurodegenerative disease. And BCL2, associated agonist of cell death, or BAD, regulates cell death. I will end by pointing out that 1433 can function without forming toxic aggregates, providing a clue through these interactions to finding better treatments for Parkinson's disease. In conclusion, we have shown novel sequence homology in the critical NAC region of alpha-synuclein, which aligns with homology and secondary structure predictions and critical stabilizing features of the three-dimensional structures of alpha-synuclein and 1433 protein. Furthermore, we verify the shared interactions that regulate neurotransmission and neuronal health. In the future, we will investigate the stable molecular contacts that interact with the shared protein pairs and expand on our functional understanding by investigating metal interactions and oxidative stress. 
I would like to acknowledge my advisor, Dr. Klein, for her incredible support throughout this project and the JKS Research Group, as well as the Chemistry Department and QBE program. Thank you so much for listening.